Hello! Today's stories come from r slash am I the butthole. Today we have one longer story from earlier this year that received a sizable update just last week. Am I the butthole for walking out over a chair? Okay, hear me out. For as long as I can remember in my family, almost any time I got up from my seat, someone would take it to either be funny or to claim it as if no one was using it. And as a teenager, it literally got to the point I bought my own folding chair so I could pick it up and carry it with me. If I left it where it was, someone would take it. Then get mad when I wanted it back. As an example, on a holiday last year, I got up from my chair for a moment to help with something and came back to find a kid in it. And then the family berating me for wanting them to move. But I tell them that when a man owns and brings his own chair, they expect to be able to use it. I own a very nice folding chair that's comfortable and easily portable, and I pretty much bring it to any family events because people are always scrambling for chairs. Well, the other day I went to a birthday party for my nephew, and like always, I brought my own chair, but at some point I had to use the bathroom. When I came back, my chair was gone, and everyone acted like they didn't know where it was. I said they had one minute to return it or I was leaving. They laughed at first, but then realized I was serious as I started going for the door. Everybody told me to just calm down, and it was just a joke. I said I don't care if they think I'm a stick in the mud. I wouldn't be bringing my own chair all the time if other people weren't always taking my seat when I get up. I don't think it's funny. I never did. My brother-in-law then pulled the chair out of where he'd hidden it, and when I got it back, one of the legs was bent. I said it was not like this before, and how could he possibly have done this to a metal chair? He said he could fix it and tried to unbend it, but only made it worse. The chair is pretty much unusable now because the leg is warped and I don't want to risk putting weight on it. I told my brother-in-law he owes me $50 for the chair because that's what I paid for it new two years ago. He got mad and kept saying it was just a stupid chair. I said it was my stupid chair and this wouldn't have happened if he wasn't so immature that he and everyone else had to mess with me for years about where I sit. Then I took my now messed up chair and walked out. My family has been blowing my phone up saying that it's just a chair and to let it go. But I still want my brother to pay me back for it. Am I the butthole? Update. Last night, I sent a mass text out to my family that I will not be going to any family function no matter how important it is until they make this right by promising not to screw with me anymore and repay me for the chair. They've mostly gone quiet now. But I can wait. I've got all the time in the world for them to realize I'm serious. I really feel for OP. I think his family took this chair thing a little too far. Let's read a few short comments before jumping into the update. Someone said, They bully you for years, constantly conspire as a group to prevent you from sitting, hide and break your property, and insult and gaslight you when you attempt to set the smallest boundary. Am I missing anything? I would suggest not attending these get-togethers anymore. They can play musical chairs without you. Seriously, what do you actually get out of going to these things that is worth putting up with the bullying? not the butthole. Yonk182 added, yes, it's not about a chair. It's about the bullying and disrespect. Someone else added a quote from one of my fave shows. When a man owns and brings his own chair, which he has crafted by hand from a beautiful Nordic pine, he expects to be able to use it. Ron Swanson. By the way, definitely not the butthole. OP added, yeah, I'm the youngest sibling in my mid-20s and my eldest sibling is mid-30s that I'm the only one who won't act like it's a frat house when partying. My siblings all have spouses and kids too. Update. I walked out over a chair and my family tore itself apart. I wasn't going to come back here again. To be honest, I'd completely forgotten I made this account. I only got back in because I'd written down the password and left it in my desk. I was listening to Reddit videos on YouTube a couple weeks ago when I suddenly heard my old Am I the Butthole post. So I thought I'd give an update. Well, things escalated a lot after I made that post because I linked it to my parents and other family members after a little while. They were furious with me at first. Some even mocked me saying things like, oh, watch what you say or do around OP. He might just post about it on Reddit. But when they actually read the comments on my post when I made them, they became mortified. My brother-in-law did agree to pay for a new chair and gave me the money I asked for. I bought a better folding chair than my last one and resumed going to family functions. But whenever I was there, there was this air about some of the family members. They looked at me like I'd sucked all the fun out of the room. 
My parents had stopped thinking the chair thing was funny and even scolded a kid for taking my seat when I got up to use the bathroom. The only problem is that this kid was my nephew, and he started crying when they made him get up. My brother-in-law came to the boy's rescue, and my nephew ended up blurting out that his daddy told him he could do it. When I was out of the bathroom, there was a big fight about it going on. Several family members, including my sister and brother-in-law, were all yelling that it was just a dang chair, and I shouldn't be so butthurt about it. My parents demanded to know why they were so butthurt about not being allowed to screw with me anymore. Like, what was their motivation after doing it for so long? It made no sense and wasn't funny anymore. And that's when I intervened. I told them none of this crap would have ever happened if they hadn't been so intent on messing with me when there really was no point to it. And I only started bringing my own chair because I could never find a stable place to sit. And if they still thought they were in the right about the situation, then they were just bullies, plain and simple. And what kind of example is that to be setting for their son? My brother-in-law raged, grabbed my new chair, and hurled it through the living room bay window. There was a bit of a pause before he realized what he'd just done. Then he took off in his car and left my sister and nephew there. My parents got my sister to call him, and over the phone, they threatened to go to the police if he didn't pay for the damages. Brother-in-law yelled a few F-bombs until my sister took the phone back, and she said that he can either make things right or she'll divorce him. Well, that did the trick, because he came back looking like a kick puppy with his head hanging low. He apologized to me and my parents without even looking at us, said he'd pay for the new bay window, and left again. My sister said he drank himself to sleep that night. My new chair was just fine. It took being hurled through a bay window like a champ. There was hardly a scratch on it. My brother hired a window company to come and replace the window, and they had to measure and order a new one before it could be installed, and until then, the window had to be covered with plywood. It took some time, but they got the new bay window, and it's better than the old one, though I imagine that it was extra expensive because it's a bay window. The family was still divided about the situation for a while, mainly brother-in-law's parents, my uncle, and a couple cousins. They blamed me and called me obnoxious over insisting on bringing my own chair and refusing to let anyone else use it. So I compromised. I said that if I had a good designated seat that no one will try to take away, I'll leave my chair in my car. It took two more family barbecues before they finally agreed to this. Since then, I've left the chair in my car unless there really wasn't enough seating, and that's only happened once since. The problem is, though, that even though they stopped screwing with me, they were still screwing with each other until things went too far. They still like to take each other's seats, but I guess others were following my example because they put their feet down and demanded it stop. It's been going on for decades and they've had enough. Brother-in-law stayed out of the fight entirely and it hasn't caused any more trouble. But for several family functions, a number of people didn't bother to show up. My mother was broken up about it because she loves hosting parties. It took months, but everything more or less normalized again. But without the chair thing going on, some have resorted to other stupid pranks like a little device you hook to a chair that makes farts. They didn't do this to my seat, but did it to a cousin, and said cousin got really petty at the next party and let out real farts. He said he ate a whole pack of fiber bars and had eggs for breakfast. It was damn nasty. Other pranks included hiding eating utensils, a stink bomb, hiding some sort of monster thing in the toilet, cellophane in a doorway, ripping paper when somebody bends over, messing with drinks, hiding shoes, copying outfits, a container of foam packing peanuts above a doorway, and finally, the one that really infuriated my aunt and uncle when a party was held at their house, a glitter bomb. They got the carpet professionally cleaned and billed the person who made the glitter bomb for it. So now, pranks are just over. They don't want any more. I'm fine with that, but the last few family functions have been a bit dull. I think they were so used to how things were that now they're trying to find other ways to amuse themselves that don't involve cell phones. Edit. The chair is a National Public Seating Steel Folding Chair. I bought it online for around $80. It's got a thick foam vinyl covered pad on the seat, and it's pretty comfortable. Definitely not the butthole. OP didn't say they had to stop the pranks, but don't you think it's interesting how when he removed himself as a target and others were then subjected to this horseplay, they all of a sudden also took issue with it? The chair through the window is the real cake topper, though. I think it's a good indication of the kind of person the brother-in-law is. Let's check out the funniest of the comments. Silent Joe 1986 said, Those family gatherings sound like a monkey crap-flinging fight at the zoo. 
Have none of them heard of board games? Much more fun than trying to be a D-bag to people you're supposed to love. Complex999 added, If they start playing Monopoly, we will hear about them in the news. Strangest Man on Earth said, For my family, it was Scrabble and Risk. People really took those seriously. Leathermost said, Brother-in-law needs anger management therapy. Someone added, And possibly Alcoholics Anonymous. Squeeze and Kitties said, And probably a kick in the nuts. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.